Yeah, I, I'd like to open the special business meeting for the District of Squamish for Tuesday, May 11th. Um, we're meeting today on the traditional territory of the Squamish Nation. And I'd like a motion to start the meeting. A community Can't charter. A, notice, a motion to waive notice as required in the community charter to start the meeting at whatever time it is you want to start it at, like right now, 2 17 as opposed to 3.15. I'll do that. I, I was going to start the meeting at 2.40. Okay. So we'll do, we, yeah, we can do that at 2.40 then. You have to so do it at the same time as you start the meeting. No, you can okay. do it now and recess till 2.40. Okay. okay, well, let's start the meeting now and we'll recess until 2.40. So, Mayor, I'll let you have me moving that and it was <coughs> Councillor Ray seconding. Okay. okay. Councillor Stoner, we need you on the screen to vote. We all have seven have to be here. Um, did you have a question? I didn't think we need a motion to reset. You need a motion to start the meeting early. We have a motion to start the meeting. Um, I'll call the question. Any opposed? Motion carries. Um, motion to, or sorry, we'll recess until 2.40. Thank you. Okay, welcome back everyone to the special business meeting for Tuesday, May 11th. Um, motion to adopt the agenda. Moved by Councillor French, seconded by Councillor Pengill. Any opposed? Motion carries. Um, because uh, public health orders prevent us from having in public attendance, we do have to pass Ministerial Order M192. And the district is ensuring openness, transparency, accessibility, and accountability at this meeting uh, by making sure that the meeting is being live streamed. The video of this meeting will be available on the district's website for viewing on demand. And the meeting is open to the public for electronic participation via WebEx. Something that would move that. Moved by Councillor Stoner, seconded by Councillor Pettengill. Any opposed? Motion carries. Um, okay, so we're on to item 4A. Um, we have a number of bylaw here. The first one is the Squ District of Squamish Notice Enforcement Bylaw um, for Camping Bylaw Fines and Traffic Bylaw Fines, number 2832-2021. I believe I'm handing it over to you, Mr. Pagely, is that right? Hear it? Can you hear now it? Now we can hear you. Yes, now we Sorry. can. My apologies. My first time sharing my new screen. Can everybody see We can see, see the screen. We can't see you, but we can see the screen. Okay. Well, let's, we'll keep moving. <laughs> okay. Uh, good afternoon, Mayor and Council. My name is Dan Pageley, the Acting General Manager of Community Services. The purpose of these, by, of these bylaws that we're about to present is to align the municipal fines within the most recent amendments to the uh, traffic, camping, and the uh, parks bylaw. I've, just in front of you, I've highlighted uh, each of the uh, amendments have a schedule attached to them. Uh, schedule F, it rel relates to the camping bylaw. And I've just highlighted the uh, salient points that were going to be added that align with the recent amendments to the uh, municipal to the camping bylaw. The next slide will refer to the uh, one amendment that we had to add to Schedule Y in the traffic bylaw to align with the fine schedule. And lastly, just a housekeeping item: we need to delete. Schedule P, the area that speaks to parking overnight in section seven, as per the amendment to the park use bylaw. Recommendation is that the District of Squamish Notice Enforcement Bylaw 2418 amended bylaw related to camping bylaws, traffic number 2832-2021 be given the first three readings, and the District of Squamish Municipal Ticket Information Bylaw. 1832-2004 amendment bylaw number 2833-2021 be given first three readings. 
Thank you, Mr. Pageley. Council, are there questions about either of these two bylaws? Councillor Stoner. Thank you, through the chair. My first question is with regards to Schedule F uh, 3.2D, which is not highlighted as uh, an addition, but I can't actually find it in the current traffic management bylaw. I'm just curious what the context is there for parking or storing a vehicle. Does that include on like a municipal street? Uh, highways, which encompasses municipal streets. And so is it specific to camping in your vehicle or is it just parking your vehicle? Hold on, let me just uh, stop sharing and then I can. I apologize, this technology. Uh, can you do this chair to Councillor Stoner, please repeat that question again, sorry. Yeah, no, all good. I'm just curious if, so in section 3.2D of Schedule F, it says, there's a hundred dollar fine for park or store vehicle or trailer. And I'm curious what the context is around that fine. Is it just parking your vehicle on a municipal highway, which includes a street? Correct. It, but it's not specific to camping in your vehicle. Correct. So we don't want people storing their RVs on our streets. Are there big work trailers? Ms. Arthurs? Um, thank you, Chair. Um, so storage is defined in the bylaw, in the traffic bylaw. And for a car, that means keeping your vehicle in the same spot on the road, municipal road, for 72 hours or longer. And then it, it just like the mayor said, it refers to not keeping your fifth wheel or your trailer on the road. And um, that's all that that means, yes. Okay, I understand the definition of storage, but it says park or store a vehicle. So if I park my vehicle on the street, will it be fined a hundred dollars? No, because the if you go back to the section of the bylaw, it refers to the time frame. So if you're just parked outside of your house on the road for 24 hours or 48 hours because it's the weekend and that's where you put your car, you're okay. Uh, and then my other question was with regards to Schedule Y, where um, uh, it's a fine occupying your vehicle for more than an hour. My understanding, uh, as per the three readings of the bylaw last week, was that there was a seasonal application to this, so May 15th to October 15th, but the bylaw, the fine, does not specify that. And I'm wondering if that should be included. That's correct. It is a seasonal and we'll, we'll adjust that. Thank you. Councilor Pettengill? Yeah, just um, the temporary shelter related fines. Um, is that so? sort of under the assumption this is someone who is not homeless who is erecting what we consider a temporary shelter and that's the the purpose of these fines to discourage a non-homeless person from erecting a temporary shelter through the chair excuse me through the chair to council pentagel that that is the intent but if we do have non-compliance with those folks that are uh, deemed uh, homeless then we, after education, awareness, outreach, and collaboration with other agencies to see if we can move them on, we do have that tool in the event that that is an option to deal with. Or, okay. It, it, does staff know then, does that help us with an injunction or something? I, I'm just sort of, you know, if someone is homeless and in this situation, they're just, I would assume, going to have a real challenge paying $100. So I'm sort of wondering, you know, where these fines would apply or, or how we would use them or, or why. I at this point, I refer to uh, Ms. Arthurs in regards to the question regarding the injunction, Ms. Arthurs. Um, <clears throat> we would 
if we were going to move to an injunction and go for a court order, um, a, a short court order, we would not apply fines first. Absolutely not. Um, and tickets, uh, our bylaw enforcement officers typically don't uh, issue tickets to people who can't afford to pay them. Um, it is a tool here that we thought we we should have uh, in the event that um, somebody does have the ability to pay. Thank you. Other questions? Mr. Pagely, if we changed one of the bylaws, um, so let's say we expand the red a red zone, do we would we need to update these again or they are separate from the map that we have in Schedule A of the Camping Bylaw? It's these are more just specific to um, the, the fines involved. They're abstracted from any mapping that we're doing. That's correct. Sorry. Okay. Any other questions? Okay, see none. The staff recommendation is to give first three readings to amendment bylaw number 2832. That's the notice enforcement bylaw. It's moved by Councilor Stoner. Oh no, you have a question? I was just going to see if we needed to include the clarification for 4.2K in section Y or schedule Y that it includes the seasonality from May 15th to October 15th. Is that seasonally captured in the bylaw itself or does it need to be captured in the schedule specifically? The only reason why I suggest it would be in the schedule is that it, the seasonality of it for Schedule F is captured in this bylaw. So I just was confused why it wasn't in both. It's others. We can't hear you. I would suggest that it remain in the bylaw in case uh, we need to use it outside of the um, uh, parameters of the visitor management, the camping bylaw. Well, there may be times that we need to uh, use it. There may be people coming to our season outside of uh, our town outside of May. You know, maybe they come in April or uh, for whatever reason. Um, having the tool in there is something that we may need. Okay, so Mr. Page earlier said we could make the change. Ms. Archer saying yep. I'm not making the change. Yep. So council wants to put a motion on the floor and we want to make sure that our bylaw is clear um, and doing the job it's supposed to do. So what do I need to amend the motion or? That's right. You would need to make, make an amendment to 4 to K. To say between. So we would need to go back to the camping bylaw. We would need to um, change what the camping bylaw says, but 4 to K in the camping bylaw. Or it's sorry, this is the traffic bylaw, and um, uh, then the fine would allow a line. Uh, let me just take a peek at the traffic bylaw itself. The chair, the traffic bylaw indicates May 15th to September 30th as the seasonality for that. That's right. 
So, so if I might, so be it four two K can only be enforced on in accordance to what the language in four two K in the bylaw is. So if we don't need feel to change more the schedule. If you feel more comfortable, then I would absolutely recommend as amended in four two K. Uh, and then include the language, um, the seasonality language that's uh, in the bylaw, May 15th to September 30th. Okay, so, sorry, did we have a mover? Who's the mover? Councillor Stoner was the mover. With, with the amendment that 42K includes uh, in schedule this, Y. In schedule Y, uh, May 15th to September 30th. Thank you. Who was the seconder? Council Friends? Mm -hmm. There was no seconder. Council French seconds. Any discussion? Council Stoner and then Council Pettengill? Although I did put this motion forward and appreciate uh, the amendment for clarity's sake, I will not be supporting the motion uh, because I still have concerns about the overall bylaws and think that moving the fine schedule is putting the cart before the horse. Thank you. Councilor Pettengill. Yeah, similar to Councilor Stoner, I'm not prepared to support this. I think um, there's some outstanding questions, which I won't get into here. I do in particular though, with this, um, the staying in your vehicle for more than an hour, I, I think is, is a, is a concern. I understand our intent there, but I think there are too many uh, side effects to that, that I'm not comfortable with. Um, so I'm not prepared to support that. And I just want to make it clear though, uh, having seen some of the discussion online and so on, it has been a bit discouraging. Um, you know, I think whatever we do going forward, we need to make sure we're treating human beings like human beings. And so, um, I don't want my opposition to this vote being seen as an endorsement to some of the discussion I've seen, uh, but I think we need a bit more work and discussion and clarity uh, before we move forward on these bylaws. Thank you. Thank you, Councilor French, I saw your hand. Was there another hand? Okay, go ahead. Oh, Councilor Herbert will be next. Yeah, I um, just wanted to add, uh, much like uh, Councillor Pettengill, uh, I have concerns about some of the discussion I've seen online, um, some of it ill-informed, misinformed, and uh, we certainly have taken steps to provide more information, and uh, I acknowledge the work that staff has done, very complex file, uh, particularly in the last couple of days to um, find tunes. So uh, I will be supporting the motion. Thank you, Councillor Herford. Thank you. Um, I'll be supporting this this motion as it aligns with the um, the fee schedule with the the bylaw that we're contemplating as as well, which I think is just um, good governance. And uh, as to the bylaw itself, I think that's a debate for uh, another time. Um, and um, procedurally, I, I understand that I would pref prefer to see. Uh, adoption before we have the um, uh, the discussion around the, the fees and charges, but it, it's all sort of comes comes together at a certain point. So I'll be supporting this uh, amendment at this time. Thank you. Any further comments? Councillor Anderson. Yes, uh, sim similar to some of my colleagues, I will acknowledge the um, communication challenge and tasks and responsibilities that we have ongoing. However, I feel that we need to the package in our toolbox at this time, so I will be supporting it. Not seeing any further hands, I'll call the question. Any opposed? Councilor Stoner and Councilor Pettengill opposed. Motion carries. Um, next up is, where's my cursor? <coughs> Uh, amendment bylaw uh, for the municipal ticket information bylaw um, be given first two readings. This is bylaw number 2833-2021. I'll move that. Is there a seconder? Seconded by Councillor French. Any comments? 
Councilor Stoner. I would suggest that for consistency, this also will uh, include uh, the seasonality for 4.2K and schedule Y. So I'll propose an amendment to the motion that 4.2K Y include uh, the dates May 15th to September 30th. Is there a second to the amendment? Second by Councillor Hertford. I'll call the question on the amendment. Any opposed? Motion carries. On the main motion, any further comments? I'll call the question. Any opposed? Councillor Stoner, Councillor Pangel opposed. Motion carries. Uh, next up is District of Squamish 2021 to 2025 five year financial plan. This is an amendment bylaw number 2820 2021. Good afternoon, members of council. Good afternoon, Mr. Russell. What's the sound of your voice? Yeah, I take it that you can hear me. So I I'm can. Going to, I'm going to share my screen and we will speak briefly concerning our sorry. Share my screen. And we can Okay, um, are you seeing a presentation and or are you? No, we can see your presentation. That is yes on the presentation? Yes, we can see your presentation. Okay, wonderful. Good afternoon, Mayor, members of council. Um, we are here today because we would wish to present an amendment to our existing financial plan for 2021. We don't do financial plan amendments on a regular basis if we can help it. Um, yeah, but there are times and reasons for doing a budget amendment. And so briefly want to speak about the budget amendment process. A uh, key element of the Local Government Act in British Columbia, and as it applies to the district, is that all spending must be included in a in the financial plan authorized by council. So there are times where a change would be required. So we may have changes, project changes, and they would result in an amendment if there, there was a change related to the timing of a project. Uh, the funding source may need to change. The scope of a project may need to have been increased and therefore requires change. Uh, budget approval may be required if we are uh, attempting to get grants for a specific project, and a project may not complete within a year, and therefore would require a, a uh, budget amendment to make a change in its overall timing also. So within the package that you have received, 
for bylaw 2820 to amend uh, our current financial plan bylaw 2804. Uh, we have some projects with timing changes. And the two projects with timing changes are the Valley Cliff Fire Hall number one and the Garibaldi Estates Fire Hall number two. I believe we're in the process of perhaps changing the name um, to Tantalus Fire Hall number two, just make sure that we get that all consistent on a go forward basis. Uh, for the first fire hall, fire hall number one in Valley Cliff, our contractor, our builder, has provided us with a cash flow estimate for spending for this year and into 2022, and they've advanced the completion date from June of 2022 to March of 2022. So that additional three months worth of spending is now occurring in 2021. So that relates to approximately a $3 million increase for Valley Cliff, Cliff Fire Hall. And with respect to Garibaldi Fire Hall, uh, we, are pro we are proposing to use the integrated development process and to use the integrated development process that brings the builders, the architects and, and the building owner, which is ourselves, together at an early stage within the overall design process. And it shares the risk more equitably amongst the those uh, groups. And to do that, we would require additional funding in 2021. So we're asking for an additional $400,000. The second group of projects are projects which require a funding change. And what we want to comment on here is the rationale for the funding change. Um, UMDC, and I sometimes struggle making sure I get the letters in the right order, um, provided uh, all municipalities, I would assume, in BC with a memo in March, late March, um, commenting that the Community Works Fund program is going to wrap up in March of 2024. That is the official end date that had been provided a number of years ago, and they were basically just confirming that that end date is in fact uh, the plan, and they're not anticipating an extension. They also informed us that as of that time frame, if you did not have not spent all your money, uh, there is a very reasonable probability that they will ask for any remaining funding back. So, given that we're already well into this year, um, it, it's not uh, necessarily feasible for us to be able to switch horses quickly enough to add additional projects to our active transportation program that would allow us to uh, accelerate spending in 2021. So the decision was made to change the funding for some specific projects. Projects that we've chosen are the corridor trail lighting projects. There are two projects uh, included in there and the total is about just under $800,000. And the other project that we're looking at is the landfill gas flare. And the rationale for the landfill gas flare is because uh, as as was explained to council last fall, the landfill uh, or solid waste utility is being uh, challenged financially due to due to the cost of the vertical wall, and so we felt that this provided an opportunity for us to fund the landfill gas flare project, which has now been complete, um, in a manner that does not increase additional financial resource requirements of the solid waste utility. So the other projects or a number of other projects that are included in this financial plan amendment include projects with scope changes. The two major projects with scope changes are the Monklin Road sewer upgrade. The Monklin Road sewer upgrade is a major project to bring the sewer along Monklin Road under the highway and upgrade it uh, as a result of going under the highway related to the depth required to go under the highway and additional uh, shoring and uh, protection requirements to go under a major roadway such as Highway 99. Uh, to complete this project, 
in a single phase, so we could do it all this calendar year, would require an, uh, an addition of approximately $1.6 million. So we are asking for a, a uh, budget amendment to change the scope of that product project. And with the Oyanuk Park Sea Dyke, um, we have been informed that uh, due to some additional complexity with the building of the Sea Dyke, we would need to put in additional piles uh, and extend the piles along the part of the Sea Dyke. Um, it's dramatically pushed up the cost. To keep this project on target and uh, time frame wise, we would want to do that work within the existing fish window, which is going to occur this fall. And so we would have to uh, take the project to tender this summer. We would not be able to do that unless we were able to change the scope of the project to increase the funding in 2022 to allow us to complete the project. So we have asked for an additional amount of funding in to the tune of $1.8 million for that project. We would like to note that there are two additional projects that are new capital projects that have been brought into the into the financial plan for 2021. One is the Adventure Center building upgrade, and the building upgrade is being funded by a tourism dependent community grant from the province of British Columbia. And the second is uh, Brenham Park Arena emergency discharge lines. Um, the province has mandated uh, an ammonia safety requirement, which would um, require us to upgrade the emergency discharge lines at Brennan Park. And for us to complete that project prior to uh, the province's target date, which is next spring, and allow us to do this without having to take the ice out during hockey, or sorry, I should say during ice season, not hockey season, there are figure skaters here too, I'm sure. Um, we would like to be able to, to complete this project late this summer when the ice is still out and we're working with the dry path because that would be required to make this project work. And so, although the project itself does not need to be completed until 2022, it is expedient for us due to the dry pad condition requirement for us to ask for a budget amendment to complete this project in 2021. That is uh, the completion of the capital projects that are being requested within this budget amendment. There are also some operating projects. So the three operating projects, one is community strengthening grant and the community strengthening grant would allow us to manage a grant uh, in conjunction with Helping Hands um, to, <coughs> excuse me, to assist the hard to house. We think that this is a, a important opportunity that we should attempt to uh, make use of at this point in time. In addition to that, there is a local development approvals grant program grant, which would allow us to help offset some costs in the development and building inspection area will operate over two years and uh, provide approximately $60,000. And lastly, in conjunction with other uh, programs and program changes that have been presented to council uh, with respect to visitor and camping management plan, there is a pilot project associated with that and the cost of that pilot project for the remainder of this season is estimated to be approximately $25,000. And so we, again, would also like to have that uh, project added to the, to our plan. It should be noted that all of these uh, items, all of these changes to the 2021 through 2025 financial plan are operating or capital projects. As projects, they are fully funded and will have no impact on the tax revenue requirement, tax revenue requirement um, 
was set in the original financial plan and we have recently set our tax rates based on that uh, tax revenue requirement. It should be noted uh, that the budget amendment that we are presenting does not require a change to that uh, tax revenue requirement. And therefore, all the other processes that have been approved and our tax rates, et cetera, would not be required to be changed. At this point in time, I would uh, open the discussion to questions um, by mayor and members of council, and I stand at the ready to answer those questions. And I believe that there are also a number of managers and project managers available if there are more technical or specific questions that are raised. So I am going to move to the end of this and stop sharing my screen at this point. Turn it back over to you, Mayor Elliott, and open the floor for questions. All right, thank you, Mr. Russell. Councilor, are there any questions about any of these changes? Councilor Anderson? Yes, Mr. Russell, uh, I'd like to ask a question regarding the Waniox Park Sea Dyke project. Uh, you've highlighted that uh, the the description highlights that you wish to avoid project delays with the contract needing to be attended to and the fisheries window. Now the project as described includes new water access ramp and dock, and I can imagine that some elements of this would need to be figured into or be in, would be involved with the dike construction. That is maybe a parking lot and the top platform. But my question is, within the budget increase request for this item, is the water access ramp and dock included? I am going to, uh, I can't see all of the people who are on this call, but I'm pretty sure that uh, there, I'm pretty sure that Mr. Ralston is available to address the question that you have asked. I believe that I have the answer to that, but I think that Mr. Ralston will be able to fill in the blanks better than myself. So I don't, uh, I don't see Mr. Ralston, but Mr. Buxton just popped up on the screen. Okay. I I think the answer to the question through the chair is both yes and no. I think it is, but I know that we have. Um, uh, I know that we were getting very close to the budget envelope that we had. So yes, it is, but. Um, I know that the budget is, is very tight on this and the the water access elements are the only real optional elements on it. When we know the answer to that question crystal clear, Mr. Ralston will be back in front of you if we need to be. Thank you for the clarification, Mr. Bucks. Thank you, Councillor Anderson. Councillor Pettengill? Yeah, thanks. I just want to say that a lot of these finances with all the different accounts and reserves and everything are uh, I, can, I find them pretty confusing sometimes, but uh, Mr. Russell, I just got to commend you. I find that uh, your reports really, really make it this clear for me and, and really appreciate the reports you bring. Um, I did have a question about the Mam Quam uh, Road sewer. Um, is that more expensive because we're just doing it all in one year instead of spreading the cost over two years or has, have the project costs actually escalated there? Um, through the chair, I am trying to reach out to uh, Jesse Morewood, who I know has the answer to this question. I see Mr. Buxton has his hand up, so I'm sure that he could uh, jump in there on behalf of his department. Go ahead, Mr. Buxton. What we've seen on that project is um, a some some general escalation in in overall costs and materials, but principally it's the design under budgeted on the um on getting under the highway i think it I, oh jesse's on oh no he's not he's just um i think it's a directional drill and it's significant that that element is is considerably more expensive than it was previously so it's it's a it's partly general and it's partly the crossing of the highway that are two more expensive than we previously budgeted okay thank you uh, Councillor Stoner. 
Thank you. Uh, through the chair, I also had a question about uh, the Mamquam Road sewer upgrade and just curious if that is a DCC funded project or partly or if uh, that is entirely through uh, debt financing. Um, through the chair, uh, Councillor Stoner, the Mamquam Road sewer project is funded through the uh, wastewater reserve. And it will be fully funded through the wastewater reserve. I hope you, you appear to be muted. I hope that that answers your question. It does. I forgot about that whole other section of our budget. <laughs> Thanks. Any other questions? All right. So the motion before us is to give first three readings of the financial plan amendment bylaw. Councillor Pattengill, are you moving that? Second by Councillor Stoner. Any comments? Councillor Stoner? Yeah, I'll just say uh, thanks to staff. It is not frequent that we do a budget amendment, um, but I appreciate uh, staff bringing this forward in order to be nimble. Uh, in part, there's a, there's a number of new grant opportunities that have become available to the federal and provincial government, um, and this allows us to pursue those as well as making sure that our important capital projects remain on track. So happy to support uh, the resolution. Thank you. Any other comments? Seeing none, I'll call the question. Any opposed? Motion carries. Thanks, Mr. Russell. Right, so we're now on to item five, which is a motion to close. Moved by Councillor Stoner, seconded by Councillor Herford. Uh, any opposed? Motion carries. So you have a different link to join the closed meeting council and